<laughs> Each time Tim hits the ball, it's like a different computer model trying to predict the future climate. Each model is slightly different, just as Tim's golf swing is never exactly the same. And because the models are trying to see so far into the future, these small differences have big effects. That's why the various climate models don't provide a consistent answer to how warm it's going to be in the future. So I'm getting the idea now that, that small changes here, they're going to have a big effect when it's way out there. They're going to have a big effect. And that's even with you as a skilled golfer. Well... The climate models at the moment, the computer models, can't give us a range any tighter than that big range we're seeing right up there, this two degree six degree, we can't get that any tighter with the existing model. But we can deal with this problem to some extent by hitting not, let's say, two golf balls, but by hitting 50 golf balls. Tim keeps on hitting balls up the fairway and eventually a pattern begins to emerge. And it's this pattern which Tim reckons holds the key to making a much more accurate climate prediction. What we can do is see how the balls cluster up there. And what that will tell us is a kind of probability that the weather will be such and such right uh, whatever time in the future we're, we're, we're interested in okay so we can look at the clustering of balls to give us a probabilistic estimate of the likely weather in the future so if there's a bunching bunching of balls in one area that would represent the accurate forecast if you like. that would represent the most accurate type of forecast we can make right so there is a way to make a much more accurate prediction of future climate. Scientists just have to run their models thousands of times and see where the results cluster. But to do it takes an awful lot of computing horsepower. More than even Tim can muster. OK, Paul, so uh, this is, the, uh, this is wow. the computer. This is our supercomputer. It's uh, what does the uh, basic calculations for our weather forecast. So it's absolutely massive. It's massive, yeah. yeah. What we're seeing here are thousands of individual processing units that together makes this, uh, you know, supercomputer, high-performance computer. So now, Paul, all of this is a computer. It's massive. Paul, this is only half of it. We've got another <laughs> half over here. Look. Good. We've got thousands more. So all of both these rooms, well, this is one big room I can see now. This is one huge computer. It's one huge computer, and we're basically talking about, you know, one of the top few uh, computers yeah. in the world. So when we talk about these multiple runs of, of forecasts, uh, wouldn't you just love to just run a world, you know, climate model through this hundreds yes. of thousands of times? I mean, would that be possible? Well, we, you know, we, we would love to, we, you know, in principle, we could use <laughs> these uh, computers to do climate forecasts. Yeah. But if we're really talking about doing ensembles of thousands of members, yeah. even something as big as this starts to become limited on what can be done. It's not big enough to do that job properly. Wow. It's frustrating. There is a way to come up with a more precise forecast of future climate, but it needs much more computing power than scientists have available. 